The recent death of George Floyd has put a spotlight on a problem that's been around for centuries, racism and hate towards black people. We all have our experiences, but they're not always easy to talk about. But a group of Olympians from the Canadian track and field squad have decided to step forward and speak up about some of their experiences with racism and their opinions pertaining to it. Growing up black in Canada, you have no choice but to submit to the fact that you're gonna be the only black person in numerous situations. Track and field is kind of an escape from being outnumbered all the time, but uh, throughout childhood, parenting, interracial relationships, you're constantly reminded about what it means to be black and often considered lesser than. Here our panel members discuss this issue. When I first sent the message out to the, to the group, Melissa hollered at me and was like, yo, like, is, is it cool that I'm involved with this? Because like, I, I just wanna make sure I'm not like taking away attention or in the wrong place. And I, I made it very clear that what she has to say is, is actually extremely important because Melissa has a black husband. She has a black child who I, I was hoping we would see at some point. She's adorable. Later, she's adorable. She's up for a while. Okay, cool. I know you may not have thought how you're gonna parent, but have you, has it crossed your mind how, um, how it may it's, be for her? It has crossed my mind and we haven't really, OC and I haven't really sat down and discussed, I mean, how we will parent in the future when it comes to racism and the color of her skin and how she may be treated differently. But the thought of somebody hurting my child, I can't say out loud what I would do if somebody hurt my child. Like that is, I, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I don't know what I would do. And the sad part is, is that I, I'm white and for every black mother out there, that is their everyday life. Every black parent, that is their everyday life. I mean, D Damien uh, as well had come from a from a mixed household. Um, you mentioned Strathroy earlier that you're training there again, mm -hmm. and it stood out to me because uh, some significant situations that happened to you in you know when you were really young. Yeah. So, well, like you were saying, when when you introduce Melissa, um, I think it, I think it's extremely important because it's a similar situation that my mom was in, and there was a lot of times where people would comment or give weird looks, say things that were uh, offensive or, or gross um, because my mom was white and she was with two black kids. And um, I couldn't imagine how hard that was to deal with. Um, but all I know is that she made it clear to me and my sister when we were kids that it wasn't us necessarily, it was those people. So they, she made it clear that they were the problem and not us. So. Uh, it gave us a lot of confidence going forward, but um, I don't think there was any other black people that I knew of besides my sister, my uncle, and maybe my aunt. Um, so a lot of the situations that I went to and went into were, were fairly awkward. Um, people would say things, people would do things, but I would have some friends who who would knock on their door and they would come and answer it and they would say like, oh, my mom doesn't want us hanging out with you. Um, she doesn't think that you're a good person for us to hang out with because I guess this image that they had of black people, um, how they carry themselves, they get into trouble, do all this kind of stuff. She didn't want their kids to be around that, um, which is which is tough for me as a kid because uh, I, I wasn't a bad kid. I didn't get in all sorts of trouble. I did. I just wanted to play. I wanted to go play basketball, play tag, something like that. And it's crazy to think that just because of the color of my skin, they could have some kind of preconceived notion about what I, what my character might be. What do you remember about the first time you were called a name? Um, well, it, it was an interesting story because the first time I was called it, I had no idea what it was. Uh, I think I was walking home from school and one of the kids might have said something. And to be honest, I'm not even sure if they knew what it was. Um, but anyways, I got home and I asked my mom what it meant. And uh, she kind of broke it down and she was explaining as best as she could of of what it meant and I remember I was getting pretty emotional and crying and uh, my mom made it very clear that that word's not to be said and I don't know people can have these these ideas and, and hate towards somebody just because of the color of their skin and uh, not for the person that they are. My girlfriend is, is Jen Cotton she's a former heptathlete and 400 meter hurdler and, and she's white and when we first started dating and we were, first went to like the, the meet the parents thing 
uh, on the drive over, I was like, do they know I'm black? And <laughs> it shouldn't matter, but based off the, the situations that I've been in the past where uh, I've been judged because of the color of my skin, I wanted to make sure that I was known. And uh, she made it very clear that you know, they knew exactly who I was and they knew that I was black and they treated me with nothing but respect. But yeah, it, it's just crazy that it's one of those, it's just a question that popped into my head and one of those things that I had to bring up. Melissa, can you share some of the social media stuff that you deal with when it comes to like having a black husband and a black yeah. child? Yeah, I mean, I think that when it first started is um, when OC and I started posting more pictures together after we got married and then we announced our pregnancy and then we started posting pictures with Corinne when she came along and there are social media trolls that just, they take away the entire message that you're trying to get out or, or the joy that you're experiencing. The bad ones, they hurt the most and they stick out the most and they just seem to, they come to the forefront more than the good ones do. But we had um, a couple messages um, basically saying that there was no place for her in this world because we were in a mixed marriage. I shouldn't have married a black man. Um, just really disgusting stuff. Um, like threatening lives. And it's just, it's appalling to me that people can hide behind screens and do this. I mean, th there's only going to be the change with the fight, right? There's going to be some casualties, whether it's losing jobs, losing opportunities, um, losing status, losing friends, the tarnished reputation. Now, I'm not, me personally, I know that's not something that's easy to do. And I know that it's not, that everyone has to take their journey in their own way and do their own thing. And oh my gosh, she's adorable. Look at that. <laughs> that's crazy. Look right. at her. She's, oh, she's trying to get separate ready and all oh the things. So we need to have a happy medium here. There. Okay. Hi. Hi. That's Anson. Say hi. What up, cutie? Hi. Hey, 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 oh, she's smart too? Even your snot is cute. <laughs>